All right, welcome back. It's Saturday morning, October the 26th here at Eunice High School. And this is a video I've been meaning to make for several weeks now. We've been talking in welding class about spark testing and different kinds of metal. And you can use a pedestal grinder or you can use a hand grinder. You can even use a oxyacetylene torch to do what I'm about to do. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be turning on the pedestal grinder and as you can hear it's going to be winding up to speed. The idea is that we can take different metals, hold them up to the grinder, and we can look for the sparks that come off. In spark testing, if you go on YouTube and you check out some of the other places that you can find this information, there are several different sites that go into this. Some of them get quite involved, some of them want to go through the whole chemistry. Very basically, some metals are not iron based, while other metals are iron based. And we usually think of metal as steel, but not all metals are iron or steel based. And the difference between iron and steel, iron is just the raw element that we can mine out of the ground and melt down and turn in and fashion into different objects. Steel is made by adding carbon and we get that carbon by adding a flux product in the process of refining the iron into steel. The flux also burns off any of the extra impurities that are in there. Okay. So, really simply, the more sparks that come off the object that's being put against the grinder, the more sparks, the more iron that's in the object. And this is a concept that welders and other metal workers need to know in order to know how to process to the final product their metal object that they're working on. And I'm just going to keep it really simple like that. There are some metals like this piece of aluminum tubing here. Aluminum is not iron based. As you can see, there's absolutely no sparks that come off of that. Then we have something, this is a piece of a uh, TIG welding rod. It is tungsten embedded into with some other alloy metals. And as you can see, very little sparks coming off. So, while this may have some iron in it, it is very little iron inside of this metal object that I'm holding up against the grinder. This is just a piece of what we call mild steel. It's a strap. It was the it was a strap for something that finally broke. Here are the sparks coming off. We look for the little sparks as they explode. This is showing us that we have quite a bit of iron in here. Got another piece of mild steel. We should get about the same spark structure. No, it doesn't hurt. Yes, you can feel the sparks. Yes, you can feel the pieces of metal. But again, we're looking at the spark pattern as it comes out. This is a bolt. Probably has a little bit higher carbon content. Let's find out. Yes, it does. We're getting quite a bit more sparks, it appears. Yes, look at that. So a little bit higher carbon content in the bolt. This is a drill bit. I don't know if you can see this, but somewhere this poor drill bit has been abused. All of the points have been completely ground off, so I'm not ruining this by doing this. But this is probably even a higher carbon content. Yes, look at this. Look 
at all of those flashing stars burst as it comes off of a grinding wheel. Very high carbon content. And then I have a piece of pipe. So, if we had to judge this, what welders and metal workers want to know is they want to know does it have a no iron content, low carbon content or low carbon steel, medium carbon steel, and high carbon steel. So the aluminum would be no iron at all. The tungsten rod would be a low, very low iron content. The mild steel, we would probably classify this as low to medium. The bolt. probably even lower than what I just had. So let's call this low carbon. Let's call this medium carbon. And let's call this very uh, higher carbon. So there you have it, spark testing. And with the spark testing, we did it with the materials we had on hand. So for us, this was a relative uh, test of various materials going from low to medium to, whoops, let me do this again. Low Low carbon Medium carbon And High carbon And there you have it Spark testing made easy on the pedestal grinder. Look at the other videos that are out there. Compare the notes. For my students in my high school classes, the idea was to keep it very simple and just show them how to look at the sparks to determine the relative amount of iron in the object that they were looking at. For professional welders, this will tell you what rod to select in your welding method to use when you're welding the object. Knife makers, uh, steel tool makers use this to help them in the process of creating the tools that they're doing, of the objects that they're doing. I hope this helps you out. If you're watching this for a class, there you go. Hopefully this will help you. Have a great day.